I became curious mm. about this topic. I became curious about people. I became curious about myself. And as a coach, I started to become really curious about people and fascinated by people. But at the same time, I look at my clients, I look at my employees, I look at the people I interact with, and I see in them tremendous capability, tremendous potential and possibility and strength. I see magnificence in people. I see it in you. I look at what you're doing and look at what you have capacity to do has been a gift. And I will say, it's not usually easy for me to see that in myself. It's much easier for me to see it in others. Welcome to Super Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Shahid Dharani. Today we have with us Joshua Friedman. Joshua is one of the world's top experts on using emotional intelligence to improve performance. He's the co-founder and CEO of Six Seconds, the global nonprofit dedicated to teaching people how to use emotional intelligence, EQ. He owns the EQ Network Group on LinkedIn with over 135,000 active members and is a master certified coach. Joshua, thank you so much for coming on our show, my friend. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here and talking with super entrepreneurs. Yes, it's a wonderful topic. But what inspired you to get into becoming an expert in emotional intelligence? Well, is there a journey? Is there a story? There has to be. I was bad at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you had to get better, so you got really into it. <laughs> One of my friends told me, we teach what we need to learn. Yeah. For example, this podcast, when I launched it, someone in the beginning asked me, he goes, oh, so are you a super entrepreneur? I couldn't know. <laughs> He goes, oh, so are you an entrepreneur expert? I go, no. He goes, so what's going on here? I go, well, I want to improve myself, so why not meet people that have those characteristics? So it's just the same situation for me. I was really entrepreneurial as a young person. I've always been. I started yeah. three businesses before I was 18 and mm -hmm. became a licensed contractor when I was 16. And I had five employees and we we're working oh. on a project and we were behind schedule and over budget. And I came to the job site one day and I was trying to push people and get them going faster. And I smashed my thumb with a hammer and I'm in the car with one of my employees afterwards who says to me, like, it seems like things aren't going so well. Maybe we should talk about it. And I yeah. smashed my hand on the dashboard and said, I don't want to talk about it. I want you people to get the work done. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you're not oh. listening to me. <laughs> yeah. It's not really. Yeah. Right. It's you just need to listen to me and then everything will be fine. Just everything will wrong be fine. With me. I don't know. This I'm sure story. a lot of the entrepreneurs listening will have had the experience yeah. of thinking, yeah. this job would be really easy if there were no employees, no investors, and yeah. no customers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just always trying to change others, right? We want them to be a certain way because we feel that we can improve things that way. But if we're, if we want to be rational about it, then we have to confront mm. the reality that people aren't just rational. And that leads us to say, I've got to develop my skills with yeah. people because that's how we create mm. value in, yes. well, I don't know. Some people think you create value just through IP or just through a widget or just mm. whatever. I believe, mm -hmm. and I have the data to show that how you really create value in business is with and through people. And that relationships, cult culture eats strategy, as Peter Drucker mm. said. And if we don't get the people side right, if we don't get our relationships internally, mm. we don't get our relationship mm. with customers and shareholders 100%. and stakeholders. And so yes. then we have to get our relationship with ourselves right, because ultimately the way we are engaging on the inside is going to change the way we engage mm. with everybody around us. And yep. 
I'll save you the 25 bucks and you don't have to buy my book inside change because I just told you the <laughs> like, all change starts on the inside. And if you want to change yeah. the way things are going in your company, you change the way you're showing up. Yeah. That's how we help people convert the outside in paradigm to an inside out paradigm. Mm. Similar as that focus that changes in the mirror and you're looking within for all the answers and solutions. And it's funny, mm. it's so beautiful that you actually find out so much more, of, of course, about yourself, but everything else that you're involved in. Yes. Yeah, I thought I was doing this for my work, but yeah, it changed me as a human, yeah. as a dad, as a husband. And I've had a lot of people, we published a great case study about doing emotional intelligence with FedEx and going uh -huh. through a really culture transformation through leadership development, a lot of the stories that came back from people when we asked them for examples of how what was the effect of learning emotional intelligence, a lot of them talked about, this saved my marriage, this saved my life. And yes, it also made me a better manager, but it made me a better yeah. human. And I think as, a, as an entrepreneur, if we think, what if? The people who work with and for me are better human beings. What if the society that I interact with is a better society as a result of what mm. I do? Mm. Mm. Yes, we have a profit imperative and maybe we have a deeper imperative. What would you say to an entrepreneur that doesn't see it that way, mm. meaning their experience and their success came from force on the outside, changing things on the outside, and they were successful at it. Yeah. For someone to change that paradigm, to completely is, uh, turn it around <laughs> when they don't have any reason to do because <laughs> they are achieving what they need to achieve. What would you say to someone like that? Why they should be investing in this or making that effort for themselves and their company. The easy answer is obviously the relationships, but is there anything else that you can define for that type of entrepreneur? Sure. I'd say there's two things. One is we have developed our success and our ability to create results in a certain context and that context might be changing. So for example, I'm working with a bank right now and they've doubled in the last three years. And I believe it. the way they have worked up until now has been very successful. And now they're twice as big and they're realizing we're going to, we're going to actually have to do things differently because we have this new situation. And that new situation could be external. It could be society has changed. I don't know, but it seems to me mm. like there's mm. been a little bit Since of change COVID. in the world. Since <laughs> COVID, especially. It certainly has been an accelerator. And yeah. so it could be, I want to change my, what I do. It could be, I want to move to the next stage in my career. It could be my business has evolved to a next level. It could be the external factors from COVID, from regulation, from social change are changing. If you keep using the same methodology you used, it, it might work, but in a different context, if we want some different results, we're going to have to do things differently. So that'd be my first mm. argument. And my second mm. argument is, look, I know a lot of people who've been super successful with kind of mediocre levels of emotional intelligence. Just think what could happen if you grew this capacity. If you could influence people more effectively, if you could make decisions that really used your instincts better, if you could actually bring out the best from the people around you, if you could grow trust internally and externally just a little bit more, how much more successful would you be? You know, these two things, one is this changing conditions that we're in and the other is let's actually optimize. And if you believe that leadership is at all relevant. If you believe that the way people work is at all relevant to the results that you get, then let's tune that up and we can measure it and we can grow it and we can test it out and we can see. Uh, we just published a new business case for emotional intelligence and there's so much compelling data, but we can measure mm. it every stage, the way That's a excellent. leader influences a team, the way the team influences the culture, the way the culture influences customers, 
And all that ladders up into sustainable performance. And mm. we can measure that and we can see, okay, let's tweak this and see what happens to that value chain. I had a little mishap yesterday with a guest. He, he basically came into Riverside and he was waiting in the lobby. And I was also on my end waiting for him. So I got an email like six minutes later. He goes, you want to reschedule? Because you're not letting me in kind of thing. So I said, I don't see you here. <laughs> we have you clicked that button because I was just trying to help. And he goes, yes, I clicked that button. I do this all day long. It's my regular routine. I'm always on podcast. I've done everything, but maybe you need a refresher. So <laughs> we need to yeah, contact Riverside. So Shay, when there's I, so many yeah. times in my life where I'm like, yeah. can I just press the pause button and do a little <laughs> coaching and intervention right now? <laughs> no, I just wanted to ask, do you always feel frustrated? But honestly, I just felt bad because he's running a very successful business. So not to mention what's happening on his health. This was such mm. a small thing. And what is he dealing with that is more serious as maybe affecting his health, his relationships? Because this stuff triggers or ripples into the personal life, into relationships, into parenting, into everything. Yeah. How you deal with the cashier at the grocery store it involves everyone. It involves the podcast hosts that never let you in. So it has a re effect every area and emotional intelligence is very important. I find not just in the business world because it amplifies results, but overall health and well-being as well. Yeah. And the data supports that. We yeah. published the world's largest study on emotional intelligence. We're in the middle of analyzing the data for this year's report, 140 different countries, randomized sampling. Wow. We're seeing a couple of concerning things. One is emotional intelligence has gone down a lot in the last few years. I think COVID is a big part of that. But there's a massive correlation between emotional intelligence and effectiveness, as you've said, mm. as well as well-being, quality of life, and our mm. professional and personal relationships. So the bad news is this declining emotional intelligence means that those aspects of what, what make us whole and healthy and successful are being compromised on average across the entire world. The good news is the skills of emotional intelligence are learnable, measurable, scientifically grounded skills that you, as you develop, are statistically significantly likely to improve those outcomes. And so it's a kind of good news, bad news situation. But if you're listening, you're probably experiencing this in your day to day. Mm -hmm. People around mm -hmm. you are behaving like that podcast mm -hmm. desk did mm -hmm. or like you did, where you're just like, mm, my brain's not quite working. And mm -hmm. that's in part, it's increased stress and pressure and complexity, increased burden on our brains and diminished mm -hmm. capacity. But we can do something it about it. It makes that. things confusing. Yeah. I would say it amplifies. The small things seem bigger, a little issue, a little Especially conflict. the petty ones. Yeah. But also the good yeah. ones. Yeah. Because it's like in these last few years, a little bit of extra kindness, a little bit of extra compassion. I think yeah. we all said, wow, that just feels so good yeah. right now. Yeah. So in your research and the work that you do, how is being neutral important in day-to-day -day life? Because you mentioned even success, right? Even something good. Is it important to be just neutral with things? I don't really use the word neutral, but I would say having equanimity, having balance, mm -hmm. agility, being able to shift more quickly. We get into a particular mode and it's not necessarily something problematic. It could be like, I'm really focused on this task and I'm, I'm just like going at it and it's going really well and I just want to keep doing this thing. And then somebody comes in my office and kind of shift over and attend to what's in front of me and then shift back. These shifts we know from cognitive neuroscience talks about the labor burden involved in task switching. It's why multitasking mm -hmm. doesn't really work. No. But our brains switch between these different things and that takes a certain amount of time and energy. And mm. what if we can get better at that? And I think we've all experienced times where we're burdened, where the people around us are burdened and it's, it's hard to change gears. Mm. So 
part of us being more adaptive, being able to handle customers better, to handle innovation better, mm. to transform better, is increasing that agility, which is there's an emotional component of being able to recognize what's happening more quickly, mm -hmm. adapt to it, and respond without the reaction or with less reaction. I would like to do it without reaction. I don't. Mm -hmm. I start going, well, yeah. And then it no, takes wait, time. Wait, wait. Yeah. <laughs> it takes time. It's like anything, right? You go into the gym, you work out. Just the yes. more you do it, the more you practice it. The stronger it gets. <laughs> yeah. It's I, just that I, control. My confession is I've been working on this for 25 years and I feel like I'm, yeah. I'm getting better at it, but I'm not there. Yeah. One of my books I co-authored is called actually called The EQ Gym because of that idea of like, how do we really make Consistent. this a practice? It's not just something to know. It, it'd be like- No. You have it'd to be become. Like, yeah. Or even, oh, I know how to balance a budget. Okay. But yeah. do you do it? No, I just know how. No, okay, you're knowing, kind of doing as yeah. an entrepreneur, you better be yeah. doing it, not just knowing it. Yeah. So the same thing here. It's not yeah. just something to know. Yeah. As, as we get older, we know a lot more, but we mm. do less compared to mm. your book. Can you share a juicy skill that someone can start doing at home immediately after watching this episode? to start experiencing EQ, to get a taste of it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I just wanted to quickly interrupt today's episode to announce something really exciting. I'm doing a five-day live launch, July 3rd to July 7th at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it's called DIY. Do it yourself. Studio grade podcast and TV under a hundred dollars using AI. I'm blown away at what is happening in my world, and I wanted to share it with you all. <clears throat> if you're a business owner, if you're an entrepreneur, I'm going to share everything in this event. You're going to absolutely love it. And I would love for you to be there. Register via the link in the show notes. And then join the private Facebook group called Mindset for Business Success. Thank you so much, everyone. And back to today's episode. Bye. Absolutely. I used to be afraid of emotions. I, they seemed random to me. Mm -hmm. And somebody would, I, I'd be in a meeting and I could see somebody got this expression and I'd be like, oh, yeah. I better not talk to them. I remember that too. Yes. And I had this idea that it would be like Pandora's box. Mm -hmm. If I acknowledged what I was feeling or what somebody else was feeling, it would somehow make it worse or more complicated. So what the research on emotions shows and what my own experience shows is that the opposite is true. That when you acknowledge a difficult emotion, that is the fastest way to start to transform it. I don't think they're negative emotions anymore. I used to, but <clears throat> now I don't see there's negative emotions. I just see there's emotions mm. or data. Just They're in yeah. the room. And are you mm. going to pay attention to that data or not? So <clears throat> the quick tip would be, whether you're in a meeting or whether you're by yourself, just taking that moment and saying, huh, wonder what that feeling is. Let me ask. Yeah. What is there, what what are some mm. of the feelings going on? And you don't need to fix it. This is the big <clears throat> wow. I thought yeah. if somebody was upset or whatever, I'd be like, oh, now I have to deal with that. No, actually, just acknowledging. Okay, thank you for telling me. So notice, acknowledge, say thank you. Done. It will transform the way you're interacting with yourself and others. Just that one step. I think you'll find it remarkable. Yeah, that's then, excellent. Then there's a lot more we can do. <laughs> that's wonderful. It's about that self-awareness. You just become aware of your thoughts, feelings, and actions, but no judgment. You're not holding up any resistance. You're just neutral. You're letting it flow. You're aware of it. <laughs> but once you become aware of it, it seems like, it starts decreasing the power of it. Yeah. I would say there's a saying, name it to tame it. Yeah. I don't know that I <laughs> love that. Name it to tame it? 
Yeah, I don't know that I love it because it implies that our emotions are something we should tame. I, yeah. I think there's something we should harness, there's something we should gauge, mm. we should use. But yeah. name it to tame it is very catchy. And so yeah, it is. <laughs> but that's what there's a there's some great studies using functional magnetic resonance imaging where they watch people's brains. And when people name their emotions, difficult, challenging emotions subside as soon as we start to name them. And that naming of emotions is actually a great example of emotional intelligence because it's we're bridging the affective experience and the cognitive skill. Naming is cognitive, right? So we're literally connecting this part of the brain down here and this part of the brain up here when we start naming it, this part of the brain over here. And we, oh, that's disappointment. Ping, I've connected it. Once I've named it, it's something I can start to get a handle on. I spent a lot of time just learning about the names of feelings and what is the difference between disappointment and frustration when they're actually two different things and they mean different things. There's a logic of feelings. And I just got curious about that and I've written quite a lot about it. I'll give you a link. We have a free online tool, which is called the emotion wheel, where people can click around and see, oh, what does this feeling mean? What does this feeling mean? And I found that discovery of, okay, what are these words for these things? What are they telling me? What's the message? I'm a pretty logical person. I'm still a pretty logical person, even though I've studied emotional intelligence, but I'm applying that logic to understand myself and others better. It's like going into a deep dive of your emotions, trying to bring clarity. What are all these emotions? When you mm -hmm. bring that attention, your focus to it, it brings you more clarity. Basically. It's also recognizing that they are there. They're there. Yeah. So you can yeah. have the most, and it's interesting. It's often the CFO who's like hyper rational. Let's not be emotional. Getting all emotional. <laughs> yeah. Emotions are there. They are driving every thought. They're driving every behavior. Mm. So we can ignore them and pretend they're not there, but that's actually really irrational. And mm. so if we, emotions are part of our brains and bodies, basic regulatory system. Every living cell in the human body, including our brains, is affected by emotions. And by the way, the chemicals last for about six seconds in our brains and bodies. And that's mm. why our organization is called Six Seconds. It means you, it doesn't take oh, that nice. long. It's a little yeah. window of opportunity to tap into the wisdom of feelings, to harness that data and use it. And this is data about relationships. It's data about engagement. It's data about burnout. It's data about trust and belonging and connection. It's data about influence. It's data about innovation. It's data about all the things that really matter in leadership. Oh, this is great, Joshua. We could talk about this forever. I love it. <laughs> Can you share with us what you feel your innermost superpower is that got you to this point in your life? I think it's really curiosity. I became curious mm. about this topic. I became curious about people. I became curious about myself. And as a coach, I started to become really curious about people and fascinated by people. But at the same time, I look at my clients, I look at my employees, I look at the people I interact with, and I see in them tremendous capability, tremendous potential and possibility and strength. And it's not something I work at, it's just something I see. And that combination of being curious and sometimes people call it unconditional positive regard or Stephen Covey said, assume positive intent. It's not just positive intent though, I see magnificence in people. I see it in you, I just, it's just like, that capacity is there. It's wow, look at what you're doing and look at what you have capacity to do. And I think that combination for me has been, has been a gift. And I will say it's not usually easy for me to see that in myself. It's much easier for me to see it in others, but in the process of working on seeing it, on articulating and on lifting that up. It has helped me see it in myself more as well. What you just explained, it resonates with me so much. It's pretty much the show 
the slogan, you are super, it's like you just have that feeling that you get from every human being that there's something tremendously special about them. They have these gifts and these qualities, these vibrational frequency to each individual is just next level. I appreciate that you shared that because it definitely hit home. And I can see that's probably the reason you're able to help people in the way that you do, because, you know, that is a very sacred connection as well, because you are connecting as one. When you're able to do that, you're connecting as one. Yeah. Yeah. We have a lot of disconnection in our world. Mm. People, the level of loneliness is higher than ever. With all of mm. this technology and all of these ways, and here we are in a studio together yeah. from different places. <laughs> Using technology. But people are feeling disconnected. And yeah. when it comes yeah. to our organizations, unleashing the power of people requires that connectedness. Great having you, my friend, Joshua. Definitely, I joined the group as well. I'm definitely going to be checking it out. I followed you on LinkedIn. I'll try to find your other pages as well. And I definitely appreciate meeting you. You're wonderful. The work that you're doing is just it's commendable. I have a lot of respect for individuals and organizations that do the work that you're doing because who knows where this is going to take us for the next generation. Imagine, yeah. imagine any business you go to has EQ built into from the moment you touch base with a company all the way to the time that you get a follow-up years later to use their service again, all the way is just amplified with EQ and what the world will be like, our schooling system, everywhere. It will yeah. just transform everything. I really want to well, share my appreciation to you. Sorry, go ahead. I will tell you that my favorite question, all you entrepreneurs out there, my favorite question is when an entrepreneur says to me, hey, you know what? Our business is growing and I realize how important this stuff is and I want to do what Shahid just said. And I want to make this part of the fabric of our organization yeah. and we can show you how. That's and great. It, it is transformational, both for the business and the people and the people that we interact with. That's great. Thanks again, Joshua. And also, thank by you the way, thank me. you. No problem. Also, thank you so much for agreeing to help us promote this episode on your network. Of because course. really, it, we do it together to spread this message. We're also going to do our part, of course. And audience, thanks again for joining us for another episode. Joshua's heart of gold definitely is something that he has that will be a definite benefit to your organization. It doesn't really matter the size of your organization, even if you're a, a company of one, the impact that can make on your business, and we have seen this happen, you could create that business into a bigger concept. It just takes that one person, really, and it has that ripple effect, take that effect in your company growth, in your overall health, in your family, everything. So don't look at the size of your company. I'm sure Joshua will be happy to talk to you, even if it's a company of one or a large scale company, definitely is something to look at for your future to incorporate EQ. It will make a world of difference to your business and your life. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for helping us grow. Couldn't do it without you. So thank you. And Joshua, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye everybody. Thank you.